Hey guys, it's George from Diamond Yard Sports Cards. Um, here to talk a little bit about uh, a couple of players that we lost recently. Um, just felt compelled to do this video. And um, the first one is Don Sutton, uh, who passed uh, very, very recently. Uh, great Dodgers pitcher for many years. Uh, 300 game winner, Hall of Famer, uh, Braves broadcaster. Uh, a lot of fond memories of Don Sutton. Uh, doing doing Braves games um, as an announcer, uh, and then uh, the passing of uh, of Henry Aaron. Um, I know a couple other guys in the community have done some really good videos about about Hank Aaron, uh, and I just wanted to kind of if you watch my channel, uh, which you know uh, obviously you're tuning in, so you watch my channel at least somewhat, uh, and I appreciate everybody who does. Uh, you know how much of a Hank Aaron fan I am. Um, he is 86 years old or was 86 years old when he passed, uh, this morning. And, um, you know, he's just always been a staple, uh, in my, in my collecting. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but, uh, I think that it's important to, uh, convey to, um, the younger people. Uh, for example, uh, I have two 10 year old sons and a 15 year old son. And I talked to, uh, the 10 year olds and I will with a 15 year old about the importance and significance of, of Hank Aaron and, and what he did um, beyond uh, just uh, baseball. Um, there's a great documentary or interview, I should say, in 2010 on Studio 42 with Bob Costas. I'm going to see if I can do a link below to that, but it's a fantastic interview. Um, and it talks very candidly about the racial issues that, uh, that Henry Aaron uh, faced. And, um, you know, uh, we know it's it's to see some degree any baseball fan kind of knows uh who is of any age probably w what kinds of issues he dealt with but uh this specifically talks uh, about it uh from his perspective uh, there's a great um portion of the interview where Costas is asking him about growing up in Mobile Alabama and uh Mr. Aaron talks about the fact that when he was growing up uh the Ku Klux Klan would come down the center of town and uh trying to exert their power, um, influence, intimidation. Um, and his mother would tell him to go hide under the bed. Um, and to listen to a man of the accomplishments of Henry Aaron uh, talk about that is really something else. Um, and so I'm getting a little choked up here. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's beyond the 755 home runs, the importance of Henry Aaron. Um, you know, in baseball history, uh, you know, he's clearly, clearly the most consistent all-around hitter of all time. I don't think you can, I mean, there are other players that may have hit for a higher batting average. There are other players who hit more home runs, uh, had big, had, had stretches where they were fantastic, you know, Babe Ruth. But but for consistency, there is nobody like Hank Aaron. Um, for character, I don't know if there's anybody like Hank Aaron. Uh, for bravery, um, just to, just a, and, and certainly he's human being, and we all know this. Um, but the influence that he's had on me, uh, just reading about him, watching interviews with him over the years. You know, I'm I'm 48 years old, so I have never lived in a world where Hank Aaron was not Hank Aaron. <laughs> you know, if you're of any age, you know. Going back, I mean, his debut was in April 13th of 1954. So there are a few people alive that can remember a time before before Hank Aaron was was on the scene. Um, so just as, as a lifelong baseball fan, um, I can't remember a time in my life when Hank Aaron wasn't in the conversation of, of greatest living baseball players. Um, you know, he was inducted in the Hall of Fame in the summer of 1982. I think I was, I was nine, just about to turn 10 at that point. So, I mean, like, when you live a life, or your life is surrounded by this greatness, and you've just always known that this man was, uh, again, not only uh, one of the greatest baseball players of all time. And my, Mike said this, baseball collector, on the inner circle of, of the greatest players uh, to truly ever play the game. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about how Hank Aaron in my collecting life uh, has been uh, a big part of it. Uh, you know, 
I have a link, a link a video I have of, of some Hank Aaron's I showed off. Um, but one of them, for example, uh, was uh, the rookie card I had, which is probably my most valuable and most treasured card, frankly. I got it for my eighth grade graduation. My parents said to me, and I was such a big baseball card nut. I mean, we all were in the 80s. I was telling my 10-year-olds today about this, uh, how when we were growing up, you'd go to the 7-Eleven, the Circle K, and they'd have baseball cards. You'd go to the toy store, they had baseball cards. You'd go to um, the Safeway, they'd have baseball cards. They had them at comic book shops. They had them all over the place. And so uh, every kid was collecting baseball cards. Um, and you'd bring your collection to school, or you'd go spend the night at a friend's house, and you'd bring your binder or your cards. And, you know, I'd, I'll trade you a... I'll trade you a Juan Samuel for a Kevin McReynolds. I'll trade you a Daryl Strawberry for a Don Mattingly. Um, you know, that, that kind of uh, trading going back and forth. But so I was really into it. And my dad used to take me to baseball card shops and, and drop me off. My mom would go and they'd go to the mall and uh, I'd sit at the baseball card shop for hours. Um, and those Hank Aaron cards were always there. Uh, and I always thought, man, I, I would want to buy a couple of those, which eventually I did. But in eighth grade, my collecting was kind of at a fever pitch before I went to high school and kind of left cards behind for a while before getting back into them. So with Hank Aaron, I my parents asked me in eighth grade, what do you want for your eighth grade graduation? And I said, I wanted a Hank Aaron rookie card. Well, in 1986, um, you couldn't just go on the internet and it was hard to find one. So then I spent most of the next month calling around uh, to different baseball card shops. In our area of, of Phoenix, there were probably, or in the Phoenix area, there were probably maybe maybe six or seven or eight. And so you'd call around and eventually, um, and if you found one, you had to go and get it quickly, you know, and you didn't even know what it looked like. You didn't know what the condition was. So, you know, you don't want to buy a beater, but at the same time, they were expensive. And so I, I said, that's all I want. And so I found one at a card shop called the batter's box, which is still in business today. And uh, we drove over there. My dad complained the entire time about the uh, cost of the card, which was over a hundred dollars, um, which he thought was outrageous for a piece of cardboard. And so I ended up, uh, my mom advocated for me and we won out, got the card. Uh, and then I've had it in my possession ever since. Got it graded. And in my video, you can see uh, it got a six, which, uh, you know, when I got it graded, I want to say 12 years ago, 12, 13 years ago, uh, you know, it was worth some money, but it isn't worth what it is now. But that doesn't matter to me. It's, it's, what, it's what it symbolizes in my life. It's the fact that it's Hank Aaron. It's the fact that um, it's a card I'll never get rid of. And so I want to show you just a few other cards um, that are uh, Hank Aaron's that I had picked up when I was very young. And they're some of my most important cards in my collection, uh, just from a sentimental perspective. Um, you know, Hank Aaron's greatness as a ball player, 6,856 total bases. Uh, number one, by far. Stan Musial is number two. Stan Musial has 6,134. 722 more total bases by Hank Aaron. Uh, that'd be two practically MVP seasons um, more than, than Stan Musial, who is obviously the, the greatest St. Louis Cardinal of all time and one of the greatest players of all time. But Hank Aaron had that many more uh, productive, product, that was that more, much more productive lifetime. 25 all-star selections. Um, the stat that I think a lot of people know about but just continues to blow me away is the fact that if you subtract his 755 home runs, he still has 3,000 hits. Uh, that's amazing when you really think about it. You know, guys struggling to get 3,000 hits. If you subtracted all of his home runs, still 3,000 hits. Amazing. Um, so, uh, oh, uh, another another statistic. 112th on the all-time strikeout list. He's number two in the all-time at-bats list. And Pete Rose is ahead of him by a significant amount, a couple thousand at-bats. But Hank Aaron is ahead of pretty much everybody else by quite a few. So second in all time in at bats and 112th in strikeouts, which I think in today's world, um, young ball players could learn a lot from that. The shame of striking out, the importance of making contact, the importance of moving people over, and the importance of encouraging as part of teamwork. Anyway, that's a totally another, another topic. But, you know, baseball is a contagious game. And so, you know, sit around and wait around for the three-run home run is, is, is 
where the, the, the league is going, but it's a contagious game. And uh, one guy gets a walk, the next guy gets a hit, the next guy gets a hit, and the next thing you know, you have a rally, not just waiting for one swing of the bat. So I think that Hank Aaron grew up uh, playing ball and understanding that. Um, anyway, uh, so the greatness of Hank Aaron, though, I mean, when you think of people who deserve the Presidential Medal of Freedom, um, he's, that, he's that kind of person. Um, the amount of hate mail that he got, uh, you know, we all know about that when he was uh, pursuing the, the home run record of, of the great Babe Ruth from different people who didn't, didn't appreciate um, the color of his skin and the fact that he was uh, assaulting the most hallowed record in American sports at that time. Now, things have changed. America's changed a lot, but we still face these issues and we can't forget uh, the greatness of people like Hank Aaron, um, what he did, what he had to go through. Uh, and certainly what's amazing in it all is the humbleness that he had, how humble this man was, and the fact that he was always smiling. Uh, he would not say a bad word about anybody. And I mean, regardless about what you think about Barry Bonds breaking um, his record, you know, he never was saying negative things about Bonds um, while well, a lot of the other people were. I think that speaks to his character. Um, so this is the type of type of ball player, uh, that I was very, and have been very proud to collect over the years. And it started from one time I was very young. So anyway, here's a few cards. Here we go, guys. So got an autograph of Don Sutton there. Don Sutton, just a fantastic, uh, Dodgers pitcher. Um, he, he'll be sorely missed as well. So I had these two cards uh, that I had picked up when I was very young, and they're, some, they're probably some of the most important ones in my collection. And I found these um, at a, uh, at a, at a, a, one at a comic book shop, this one at a comic book shop, 58 All-Star Selection, Hank Aaron. Probably been in my possession since about the early 80s. Um, is it, it's, a, it's a five, but it's an important five to me. Uh, first got into these all-star cards. They were very reasonable. And so as I've talked about in, in the past, Hank Aaron, all-star cards, uh, these all-star cards, you could buy a Mantle, you could buy a, a Banks, uh, you could buy an Aaron. Um, you'd never suspect he was the National League home run king, slightly built, uses his strong wrists and keen sense of timing to blast balls into the seats. They always said about Henry Aaron where his wrists were unbelievable. Um, the size of his wrists, the strength of his wrists. And then this 1960 Hank, I've showed it off before. It's a four, and it's one of the most important cards in my collection, and I've had it for many, many years. So, guys, thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate you listening to my rant. Um, and uh, we'll be, obviously, sorely missing Henry Aaron and Don Sutton. And, guys, keep collecting.